Next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, an underwater blast from the past, celebrating Sea Hunt. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. In 1958, Sea Hunt was one of the most popular programs on U.S. television. It starred Lloyd Bridges as Mike Nelson, an ex-Navy diver doing freelance underwater work. His underwater adventures spurred a generation of viewers to learn to dive and appreciate the ocean. While Sea Hunt's a little ahead of my time, I know a lot of people who would not be scuba divers if it weren't for Sea Hunt. And some of those people are here this weekend at Silver Springs for the Sea Hunt Forever Festival, celebrating the history of Sea Hunt. Mike Nelson's gear was state of the art in the 1950s. He had his double hose regulator, tiny rubber fins, and no buoyancy compensator. The spirit of Sea Hunt is being kept alive by a group of vintage scuba enthusiasts who restore, maintain, and dive with classic scuba gear from the 1950s. This weekend, I'm attending a special event that happens only once a year, the Sea Hunt Forever Festival at Silver Springs State Park in Florida. Silver Springs is a special place. It's a little piece of unspoiled Florida wilderness, complete with an alligator or two. There are a lot of springs in Florida, but there's a special reason why Sea Hunt Forever takes place here. For example, to find sunken treasure or mineral wealth. From 1958 to 1961, Silver Springs was a prime underwater filming location for Sea Hunt. The clear water and calm, controlled conditions made it a perfect place for what was basically an underwater studio. Silver Springs is now a state park, and no scuba diving is allowed. My name is Captain Christopher Staker. I'm going to be your guide here for the next 30 minutes or so. But today is different. Tourists are boarding a glass-bottomed boat for a fisheye view of the spring. Below the boat, crystal clear water and divers. The rain won't spoil this special day. We're here to get wet anyway. Alan Claude is getting into his vintage gear for a dive in the spring. I feel right at home here with all these double hose regulators. Cameraman Todd and I head for the water to catch the underwater action. My double hose is a modern interpretation of the classics, so I decide to try out some real vintage stuff. Other than the algae we've all kicked up near the entrance, the water in the spring is super clear, and everyone looks like they just jumped into an episode of Sea Hunt. If ever there was a chance for fully grown adults to relive their childhood, this is it. Reenactments are the game of the day. Play knife fights with rubber knives break out every five minutes. Hiding. 
Meanwhile, the good guy has found a treasure chest. Vintage fins, I try to keep up with the unfolding action. Victory for the good guy! The reward? A chest full of gold coins. The local fish keep far away from the action while I look for the next knife fight. Unfortunately, a bad guy has seen me, and he's coming after me with one of those terrible rubber knives. My buddy Lewis Hero saves the day with his extremely dangerous spear gun. Jerry Lang zips by on his Voight Porta Sub, an extremely rare and noisy piece of vintage gear. Meanwhile, Joe Musial fires up a magnesium torch. Magnesium burns so hot that water can't extinguish the flame, and the reaction releases oxygen from the water needed to support the combustion. Inside the mouth of the cave, the torch provides light and even produces smoke. These magnesium torches were all the rage in the 1950s, but they're quite dangerous and not commonly used anymore. fundamentally since the 1950s. We have a few new gadgets that make diving safer, but for the most part, it's still a cylinder of compressed air and a regulator that allows one to breathe that air underwater. But at the end of the day, events that keep vintage diving alive are mostly about having fun. And isn't that why we scuba dive? The Sea Hunt Forever Festival is a great tradition that not only helps keep history alive, but it's just plain fun. Thank you.